Castle of Castle Does, Episode 2, Team Fortress 2, Block Mesh Phase 2. I ended up getting feedback and it was awesome. There was uh, TF2Maps.net provided a playtesting session. We went and, uh, you know, was testing all kinds of other maps and all kinds of stuff. If you're a budding level designer who's looking for a good community, that, was, that has to be top notch. It was amazing all of the coolness that was going on there like being able to look at everybody else's maps everybody was giving uh, feedback they have a whole system to be able to provide feedback it's amazing it, I, I've never seen anything that uh, you know great for uh, feedback for level design in a community setting ever so highly recommend checking that out if you want to get started in level design tf2maps.net is the place to go and uh, acquaint yourself with every everybody there. I highly recommend it. So I ended up getting feedback for uh, The Damned. And uh, my initial reaction was to burn all my clothes and cry in a shower. But after that, I made this list. And this list is all of the bugs and uh, all of the major tasks that I had that I wanted to complete. The first one on the list is the biggest one. Larger, more open, and simpler layout. This means that I literally went through every single area aside from the spawn points and reworked the whole entire level, essentially. The entire thing. Um, other than that, the rest of it was simple bugs. Um, mostly very, you know, easy to deal with. Well, there really wasn't anything uh, too hard to, you know, to, to fix. And uh, the map has improved a lot during this phase. I, uh, I'm looking forward to being able to join up for more playtesting and, uh, and everything like that. But before I get started on showing the, vi the time-lapse video, uh, there's something else that came up. A lot of people asked questions about the brush manipulation thing that I brought up in the last video. Um, I have an example to show exactly what I mean, brush manipulation between Radiant and Hammer, and how they differ. And uh, while Radiant tends to be a lot more efficient for building, it does some weird stuff too. So it's like both engines, just both editors have these weird quirks that, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty amusing. Here, take a look. Okay, so what we have here is Hammer with an example, and we have here an example of uh, Radiant. And it's the same brush, uh, you know, makeup. So, in this first example, I'm going to show how skewing works with a single rectangle. In Hammer, it's immediately off the grid. Now, it was pointed out to me that you can go ahead and you can use vertex manipulation and, and get it back on the grid again. But this takes time. It's still annoying. But then if you do the, you know, the middle one, you're back to skewing it and it's off, it's not quite off the grid, but it's still a little weird and haywire. Now, grab this group of brushes. I should have marked you selected that. Um, and try dragging these. Now look at that. They're, there's, they're all over the place. They're, you know, some of them are on the grid, and like the only way to get it back, all of them back, on the grid properly, <laughs> is to put it exactly where it was before, or, you know, waste time going through. And it's just totally weird. Now, here's where Hammer is stronger than Radiant. The way its transform function works, you can do weird shapes like this, and you can drag it out, and it works. So I can make all kinds of neat looking, you know, neat stuff. 
Now let's take this in the same example in radian. Okay, so we have the regular rectangle, and then we skew it on the grid. It's perfect. Now, it's, I mean, I use that all the time. It's extremely nice. And here, right here, is what happens when anybody goes from hammer to radiant too often. You will hold down the space bar and duplicate a whole bunch of brushes. It's going to happen. I hate it. <laughs> it drives me crazy. It keeps happening. Okay, so here's how Radiant handles this. Notice all of them remain on the grid perfectly. And I even have the ability to do some weird stuff where I can kind of manipulate just one of them or, or a small group of them at a time. Here's where Radiant utterly fails. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> See, Radiant doesn't do a, tr a free transform control. It, it, it actually rescales the, the... It doesn't scale the model. It, it, it um, manipulates this its edges by moving the edges over. <laughs> now I'm making brush art right now. So, while I'm making brush art, let's make some brush art in Hammer as well. Look at this. Okay. Now, I don't know, I mean... <laughs> what the hell is going on? Like there was, the brushes weren't even correct. Did you see that? They were like all of a sudden horizontal line out of nowhere. None of this is all a giant mess. This is horrible and should never. None of these should be structural brushes ever for anything. Now it's worth noting that the, one of the reasons why I don't believe Radiant was given a free transform function. Um, that's as easy to access as Hammer is because Radiant depends on patches. Radiant uh, came up around the Quake 3 era when there were primitives that were created using special shapes that are like just meshes. And I'll go into I'll go into detail what patches are in another in another segment, uh, probably the next one. But there was never a need to worry about that because all patch manipulation is all done in exactly how Hammer can, does all of his brush manipulation. So it's kind of like Hammer tried to compensate by changing its brushes over to behave like patches. So, whatever. Anyway, time to get started with the actual content here. And we're off. Here we go. Now well, the first thing I need to do is isolate all of the objects that I wanted to keep from all the objects that I wanted to delete. And there was a big mismatch and a really confusing process right here. In fact, it actually took me a couple of tries to kind of decide how I was going to do this because when you have a whole bunch of stuff you want to keep mixed in with a whole bunch of stuff you want to delete, it's kind of weird. I also just wanted to simplify the, the scene because uh, I wanted to keep the brushwork clean. This is why. This is one of the reasons why having clean brushwork is, you know, is going to help you in the long run. Because if you have clean brushwork, you can change things later without having to worry about weird leaks or entities in walls. I highly recommend you know learning to keep your your work clean, just for this reason alone. Because look at this. I'm just redoing everything. Another really important reason to keep your your work clean is because whenever you're in a professional environment you have to be prepared that other people are going to be looking at your stuff and they're also going to be working with your stuff and if you decided to hide a secret room you know by accident or have a bunch of stuff sitting in the floor or you know, someone else is going to spot those things and it's going to be very annoying for that person so <laughs> yeah do everything you can to keep the brushwork clean people So while I'm in the middle of deleting everything, I'm reworking the base so that there's a, a stairwell within the base that leads down to a doorway that leads right into the flag room. Um, there's just literally, I, I, I took out an entire swath of the level right there. I also delete all of the bottom 
was just completely it is gonna be completely removed you can see I just removed a whole bunch of stuff the map is in a total disarray it's leaking all over the place and you know at this point in time I'm I, I've just gone completely crazy but it was nice because this time around I knew more what I wanted this time like when I first constructed the level I had all kinds of areas that I didn't like whereas this time after I was done with this uh, construction of the map I, I'm fairly happy with most areas I'm a little worried about the long sight lines uh, I kinda wanna see how snipers react because there's gonna be some insanely long sight lines but I, I think they may actually be okay so you can see right here, uh, you know, there's a whole entire bottom area is just getting deleted right now, and I'm using the hallway. There's no more of a dog leg bend. Everything's just getting changed out. Um, opening the areas up. Everything. One of the things that was suggested to me to help me speak in front of the camera was to pretend that the camera is sort of like a drinking buddy. But uh, that doesn't work too well because if I do that, I'll be way too drunk by the end of the video. So I completely deleted the entire red side of the base of the map. And I, there's just like a whole bunch of entities on that side of the level just like floating in the air. <laughs> I have them all hidden at the moment. Like I went through and cleaned up a whole bunch of stuff and hid things. Um. <laughs> so I was just kind of like planning that eventually I was going to just re-mirror the map and then all those other entities are sitting on the other side we'll have to have me I'll have to like manually touch all of them to make sure that you know they're not floating it or inside of geometry or something like that it was just going to be really kind of as weird haphazard way to go about doing it but it would be the fastest way to do it so that's what I decided you can see here that I've made the skywalk a lot flatter and much more open um, it should feel way more roomy when you're up there because before it was just unacceptable the entire stale stairwell that led down to the below area is just gone. I removed it entirely, so there was no there's no way to go down to the area below from uh, the sniper tower section. Most of my time right now is literally just bouncing around because. I've been doing that pretty much the whole time. It's just uh, going from one side of the map to the other to do this one little thing over here. I don't know how I managed to get this to, you know, uh, not have any leaks or anything like that. Like, I, I was all over the place. You can see that I'm um, really struggling to keep the brush work clean at this point. There's just brushes all over the place and I'm starting all over. I'm also copying um, more stuff from the other levels. Uh, here you can see I'm, I copied that door from Turbine. Uh, I like to use that door and I used it twice in the final map on each base. Sort of a neutral door. It's good for, you know, separating areas, not getting somebody to snipe you from all the way in some weird spot. I ended up liking it. So the flag room has this this uh, short wall on one side of the middle center area thingy and there's some boxes that you can jump up on top of to get into that middle area and my goal to make is to make the flag room a really interesting place to try to guard there's you know there's maybe two ways to get in but there you know there's different ways to kind of enter from different angles and there's like different places for people to be able to hide or sneak up on and you know kind of get the drop on each other I want the the flag rooms to kind of feel like a little 
Rocket Arena map or something. I just, you know, I do my best to try to make it feel, uh, you know, interesting. Here, here you can see that the sniper tower is now changed into an open room from what it was before. Before it was just like a bunch of tight hallways. So the sniper tower area actually is now like, you know, an area where combat can actually happen. It's much, much better than it was before. I was able to shrink the size of the tower a little bit, and you might have just seen that happen. And that's pretty cool. I, it's going to be pretty interesting to look back on what I was originally going to do, you know, the, the original plan for the layout, and see how much everything has changed. And so, some of it's still pretty much the same as it was before, but there are things that were just, you know, completely didn't work, so I had to modify it. That's going to happen. You know, uh, I guess that's one of the, the th things to worry about when working professionally as a level designer is that uh, you're going to have to change the stuff that you work on. You know, like you can't just like make a map and be like done with it. Uh, that almost never happens. In fact, it it, it outright never does. Not in a professional environment. You build something and you got to change it. Be ready to change it, a whole thing. It's gotten down to a point where I'm pretty fast at, you know, modifying things. And the biggest bottleneck for me is is, is deciding what I want to do. Which, ugh, drives me crazy. It's like a nightmare to figure that out. But once I have that, I can build the map in no time flat. Here you can see me actually going through and deleting all of the lights and stuff that uh, I'm going to try and duplicate from when, when I remirror the level. <laughs> There's just so much random stuff, like you see me flying around, I'll do one thing over here and then I fly over and do another thing. It's total chaos right now. <laughs> okay, here you're going to see one of the bigger changes to the level. I'm adding a lower path in front of the dam so it's like a catwalk uh, I'm not sure exactly how realistic this is but you know for gameplay purposes this is gonna be a really big thing it allows a way for people to go straight across the front of the dam sort of down so snipers can't guard everything at once they're gonna have to choose where to, you know, to hide in order to be able to snipe at everybody. Uh, there's going to be a couple of doors on either side that open up, and I'm building the, right now as you can see, I, I'm, I'm building the doorway. And that's going to have the turbine door uh, as well, you'll see. At this point, you can really see that I'm really strongly at uh, starting to think about art. I know I'm going to be getting a little bit ahead of myself, but when you're working on a tight schedule, that's one of the things that I want to try to duplicate. 
is, you know, I mean, the life of a level designer is also type schedule. In most community maps, you can keep the community map for as long as, you know, how long you're going to live, if you feel like it, you know, however long you feel like having it on your hard drive. You don't get that option if you're working uh, on a, a game that's supposed to ship. So, I don't have the option as well, not for this project. I need to finish this map. So, uh, art is definitely something that I'm starting to, to block out in the block mesh itself. So here, the bottom path ended up having a weird collision error with the the above area, the sniper room. Uh, they kind of bumped into each other, and there really wasn't much that I can do. In fact, there's there's not there's not a whole lot of uh, geometry uh, wiggle room that I was able to provide. It was just more struggling with brushwork, um, and I kept <laughs> having like these little brushes poking through in the wrong spots. Because of a you know a nearby area, uh, the end result is that bottom area ends up being kind of tight. So I decided to add these arrows, and then I realized that the arrow has another arrow on the back of it from the model. So I was like, huh, um, somebody can get behind it and see this blue arrow facing the wrong direction. That's just not going to be acceptable. So I drag up a piece of geometry from the side of the dam to hide the blue arrow on the other side of the model. And that's just one of those uh, secret level designer things that I guess just sometimes it happens where it's kind of like, you know, shh, it's a secret between me and all of you. Okay, so at this point, I didn't want to let go of the idea of having an air vent that led as a connection into the main base, uh, the flag base. So I, I, I spent all this time, you know, grabbing a, an air vent from turbine and reworking it and getting it to, to fit on one of the walls, and uh, I get it all set up, and... I don't know, it ended up feeling kind of weird. <laughs> and it was like a weird idea, and then I, look what I do, it, it, this is just one of those things. <laughs> it's, it, it's one of those, it's a perfect example of one of those ideas that, you know, it, it looked really good in my head, and it ended up looking really weird in the math. <laughs> so then I realized that there's this insane sight line you can see all the way from the entire base all the way outside through this air vent and see the arrow on the other side. So I end up, okay, so I dog leg the vent, it's a forward vent. So I, I, I take the vent and, and I make a bend so that you can't see all the way outside from inside of the base in this weird angle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man, what a mess. I mean, seriously, look at the vent texture. I was like, oh, I'm just going to leave it alone, you know, during block mesh phase, the vent texture can just be all completely haywire. <laughs> I won't worry about it. <laughs> so everything is just, I'm having like Duke Nukem 3D level design flashback air vent texture. <laughs> I'm just, oh man. So at this point, uh, you know, I'm super tired and the air vent was pretty much what marked the end of the night for me. And uh, I ended up having this weird dream, like, about this air vent. I'm like trying to 
this, you know, what the hell, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's just fine, maybe I should, why, why do I have it, oh, like, what, what should I even do with this thing, like, uh, so I'm, I'm kind of like stressed, but I'm super tired, so I end up going to sleep, I had to fucking dream about their event, <laughs> like, whatever to do, and then I come back the next day, and I ask Ren, you know, what she thinks about the air vent. So she takes one look at the air vent and uh, looks at the rest of the room and everything like that. It's a cool room, cool flag room. <laughs> she looks at the air vent and she goes, uh, Russell, this uh, this lets you drop right on top of the flag. Like, there's, it's nothing like the drop down in turbine or, or anything like that. This is literally drop on the flag. <laughs> Or the intel, I'm sorry, I keep saying flag, I mean intel. And so, <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, damn, that's, that's a pretty damn good point. Uh, well, I th maybe I can do something else with the air vent. I, and I held on to this damn air vent idea. I, and I must have tried a couple of different things, and I kind of, you know, in my head, and like, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it, and I spent all this, <laughs> I wasted all this time because I didn't want to let go of this damn air vent. So, I got rid of the air vent. So one of the reasons why I was holding on to the air vent idea so much is that there's a corner, which is you can see right here, uh, where you can kind of watch both entrances. And I felt like maybe there needs to be one more way in. Uh, but that's not really true. You can't really guard that because it's, I added an extra lip here and that lip prevents you from being able to uh... It, what that lip does is it makes it so anybody who's coming in from that entrance will have a height advantage against anybody who's deciding to stand in that one corner so it, it's not really a very great spot uh... hopefully not overpowered here you can see that I uh, I held on to the air vent idea one more time for maybe a drop down in a different spot in the room and then I just gave up I said fuck it and no more air vent it's completely gone didn't go without a fight <laughs> now at this point uh, there's another problem uh, the max visibility range there seems to be some kind of a far plane or uh, engine limitation, perhaps something that I can configure, but I don't know how. Um, it's just something that uh, means that those, that sight line is so long that it's actually longer than the engine will allow me to render. Uh, well, you know, so um, well, as, there's a couple of things wrong with that right there. First of all, it's happening at all, and uh, second of all, you know. It, I, I can really just bring in, it's just so much space, it's got to be what, you know, I don't even know how many units that is. So, bring, so bringing it in like this, uh, as you've probably just seen right here, is, uh, seems to have, uh, you know, eliminated the problem uh, j just within the, you know, the range of extra 128 units. Now, you might notice that I was going through uh, earlier as well, trying to <laughs> create arches and uh, round out the level a little bit because one of the complaints that the level received was that it was a little too blocky, and I absolutely agree. So I ended up making my own arch. I started off with the primitives, but the primitives aren't, they didn't quite have the shape that I wanted. I wanted something that behaves more like the patches in Radiant on Quake 3 engine you know and that's what I created right here so I ended up taking that and because of the way the brush manipulation works I'm, I'm literally able to treat these brushes exactly like a patch <laughs> and that's exactly what I did so I ended up putting a cool archway in the center window using the same exact thing I can use those arches anywhere I want it's pretty neat All right, so all of the you know changes and everything like that, and I'm getting ready now. This is preparation for remirroring the level. 
Now this is pretty crazy. I am, uh, you know, I've gone through everything. I, I've spent a lot of time just looking at the level and making sure that everything is, you know, how I want it. So I go through on the blue side and I hide everything that I don't want to duplicate. And that's pretty much it. Like I select it. I, I used a, a, a brush that's like formed under the grid and I mirrored it. And now I just line those brushes up and everything went perfectly. So at this point I'm swapping out models and you know getting ready to make the red side look a lot more red. Um, there's a lot of meshes that I use that are you know color oriented. Um, everything at this point is just about getting the red side to function correctly. And so much little tiny tweaking and all that stuff too. You know stuff that probably didn't even really need to pay attention to at this point. But there you go. Right here I placed a player spawn to see if I can aim the model at it and the point light aimed but the, the the light model is just built wrong all right so at this point I'm flying all over the level looking for anything that might leak because this is something that I do I, I, I run a personal bet with myself I run one compile after I feel like I'm finished and see if it leaks. And I love it when I nail it and didn't, you know, no leaks after doing all those changes, everything you just watched me do, and pow on the first try, right? Well, I almost had it. There was one thing I missed. One damn thing. I could have I could have like nailed this right there. Oh, I could have got the whole thing and it was the fucking light. So I'm running around the level and I'm, you know, I'm doing my regular play testing. I fire a rocket and I'm like, wait, hold on a second. Oh no, rocket went right through the, what the fuck? Wait, don't, don't MDLs have uh, per poly collision on there? Like, uh, oh, guess, I guess not. Shit. Well, what? The, wait, I copied that directly from turbine. So what the hell happens in turbine? So I run all the way in the turbine. Sure enough, in turbine, I fire a rocket, explodes. Doesn't go all the way through. Oh, that's why. Damn it. I, 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 yeah! I, who makes the doors that low? Fucking. Ah. Okay, well, time to fix it. So, what I do is I use a uh, bullet, a block bullet. Every version of Quake has had this. Uh, Call of Duty has it. It's usually like, you know missile block or block bolt every engine's got some bullet block thing and that's that's what I decided to use so I'm just messing around and look at this almost almost ah I bet if I didn't suck I could have made that so at this point it's pretty much bottom of the barrel I'm trying to remember the name of the entity that makes the briefcase disappear the intel disappear when you fall into a death pit <laughs> I finally found it. It took a little while. Uh, a lot longer than it looked like, and there you go. So I do a base pass of uh, ENV sounds and, you know, adding like echo effects and stuff like that. Well, looks like the map's done. So I guess that's pretty much it. Like, you've just watched me do all of the things up here. Well, there's no need for them anymore. They are complete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god, I gotta put
put more stuff there now. Well, next will be the art phase. Although, it's entirely possible that the level has horrible problems. I don't know what. Probably, you know, you know what my, my guess and I, uh, See if I'm right. We'll just see if I'm right. We'll, we'll, okay. All right, all right. I think snipers are just going to be stupidly overpowered. I, I opened up the sight lines quite a bit. So if there's going to be something, I'm willing to bet my money on that. But otherwise, I think this map's come a long way. I mean, hey, it's a lot better than it was. So I'll see if I can get another round of feedback. And uh, the next segment of Castle Does is likely going to take a break from the Team Fortress map. And I want to try something else uh, and talk about um, level design for a different engine. Uh, probably something along the lines of Doom. I kind of want to start with the oldest and then work my way up to the newest. So it'll be like, eventually I'll be doing a Crytek map or something. Anyway, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again, hopefully. And that's it.